Tap like, tap like. Brothers and sisters, let me know y'all in here. What's going on? My name is Brother Legend. I'm here to have an interview. I'm here to ask questions, not here to be asked. I want to ask y'all some questions. If you're interested in the questions above me, you want to give us your take, feel free to send up the request. I'll let people up once we get to 2K likes. Once we get to 2K likes. Tap like, tap like. In the meantime, I'll answer, I'll answer some of the things in the comments. Tap like, tap like. Share the live. Sisters, brothers, and others, I know y'all in here. Sisters, brothers, and others, what's going on? What up, what up? Oh, it's too late now, Marlon. I'm up in here now. I, th I thought they took her down. But y'all, yeah, go hold it down. You know what I'm saying? Don't. We not free until we all free. Ain't going to be a separate revolution for African-Americans that exclude Africans. Ain't going to be a separate revolution. The revolution will not be televised and it will not be separate. There won't be a separate liberation for our sisters. There won't be a separate liberation for brothers. Marrying, marrying your oppressor does not give you access. It does not give you access. Marrying your oppressor during your oppression does not give you access. The access is denied. There won't be a separate revolution. We're going to have to. We need each other. We need each other. Brothers and sisters, we need each other. Do y'all know that? Whether you like it or not, we need each other. Some of y'all don't like it. But guess what? We need each other. May not want each other, but we need each other. We should want each other. If we don't want each other, then feel free to come up and tell us what's wrong with you. But we definitely need each other. Mm -mm. We're not going to hear about American exceptionalism. And the idea that because I come from a bigger plantation, I'm a better black man. We don't believe in that. We don't believe in that. There will not be a separate revolution where black women are liberated and the black man is still in oppression. There won't be a separate revolution where the black man is able to wield patriarchy against sisters and he is able to maneuver and, and exert his will over the rest of his people. That ain't going to free us. That ain't going to free us. If, if you think it's going to free us, then tell me how. I'll hear you out. I'll listen to you. I'll hear you out. Tell me how liberation is going to come in the form of a separate movement where we are dividing ourselves Instead of coming together, it's too much division. I agree. It's too much division. Shoot, I think even the Republicans be saying that, don't they? 
so much division these days. Division. I agree, it's too much division, but I ain't talking about the same people they talking about. I agree. But the people he's talking about is the reason we have to talk about the division. We need each other. It ain't going to be separate. The Internet, the Internet, to have you believe it's separate. Intersectionality put a division symbol in a lot of y'all's brain. Intersectionality and in talking the nuance about how oppression works. Is not the same thing as saying that we need two separate movements. Brothers and sisters, we got to come together. We got to come together. The black woman is not just my lover. The black woman is not just royalty. The black woman is not just the original woman. She's not. I don't love the black woman just because she's able to give me children. I don't love the black woman just because of the curves of her body or the, the way that she look, the way that she smell. I love all of that. Don't get it wrong. I love the sisters. But that ain't the, that ain't the reason. That ain't the reason. The reason we need each other is because the black woman is my comrade. The black woman has shown us time and time again that we cannot be liberated without her. The black woman has shown us time and time again that when we can't do for ourselves as black men, that she will pick up the baton. The black woman has shown us time and time again. And every time the black woman has picked up the baton, those, those able-bodied and conscious will pick it up and stand right next to her. There's never been a movement where a black woman has made any type of progress in, in uh, gaining the concessions necessary for survival and a black man was not right next to her. It's never happened. We need to stop the division. On this live, we don't do that division. On this, on this live, we see our brothers and sisters as comrades. Two people mutually coming together with an interest, in, interest with preservation of culture and preservation of our people. We both have a shared interest in a hostile environment. What does that make us on the battlefield? That makes us comrades. My allegiance is to the black woman because she is a comrade. She's the only demographic on earth that has always been in the corner sit here with me as a black man. Just because some of y'all found a few individuals that you feel like is problematic don't mean they're not problematic to your community. Just because they love you or say they love you, doesn't mean they love your people. Just because you love them, don't mean that they people love you. What's going on? Uh, Black Proof and Positivity, my brother, what's going on? Doing real grand, keeping it real. Salute, comrades, hello. How you doing, Salute, brother? salute. Peace, Ashe, talk to us, family. Oh, yes. I had a conversation with my cousin just a little bit ago about this very same topic, are interracial marriages between white tea and black people ethical? It is a compromising situation, that's what it is, and we should acknowledge it as such. And it is very much problematic, I'll tell you why. We must think of it in the terms of, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> What's love got to do with having a child that's biracial? You don't got to love your enemy to have a child with him. You don't. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we think of Rome and we think of Greece. We think of Egypt. And it's like back then, yeah, there were different cultures having children with each and every one of them, whether they loved them or not. And the fact is, well, did any of them prove that Either culture, either nation was not hateful of the other, did not have any spite for the other, did not have war with the other. 
And that's where we are at right now. Where our people, where our men, where our women are compromising themselves by settling on the myth, the idea, the, the fallacy that we are not at war with each other. You know, that whites here and black people truly can love one another and we don't, and we not be at war. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I love what you just said. What's love got to do with it? What does love have to do with liberation? I heard that. It's not about love. It's about business right now. Brothers and sisters, are you standing on business? Or are we standing on love? Are we standing on business? Because there's, there's, there's unfinished business in our community. As long as there's unfinished business in our community, we don't got time for love. That's a luxury. That's a luxury. You know who got time for love? The people that don't have to worry about business. The people that have the privilege of not having to stand on business. Right now ain't the time for love. We don't got time for love. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And then it comes to the second question. Can pro-black and can you be pro-black and marry non-black people? This comes also with a compromise. It's like, well, do you not want to be, stay and grow your blackness? Do you not want to prioritize what it is to have a black child, a full and proof black truth, a product of your own relationship with your own people? Why? Why don't you want to? Why don't you want that? Because you want to settle on this idea again that it can, like that, it, that you can, that you that, wait, that it, that you can just be love them. Like love is love. Stop lying to yourself, brothers, particularly mm -hmm. sisters. Listen, I understand you. I understand that y'all are in a situation where y'all looking for security, because cur currently we are we have kept we have our women insecure. Mm -hmm. And our brothers need to stand on that business that we can have them secure. We can prioritize them. We can prioritize our children in America and the other diasporas across the Caribbean, across Europe, even in Africa. You don't gotta get with it. You don't gotta get with them. You don't gotta get with the. You don't gotta get with these clowns who act like oh they don't hate you. You don't gotta get with these clowns that act like oh they're not benefiting off of your your suffering. Because why? Because why? They, they give you a few material possessions. They give you a few. <laughs> they give you a few pats on the back. They give you a few kisses under the bed sheets. Is that why? Mm. No. And that's why I say, prioritizing what's in the best interest of building within the black, the African community. You cannot be pro-black, and marry these folks. I Especially heard that. When they are the greatest criminals and thieves to ever walk the face of this earth. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't marry the devil and call yourself righteous. Being for the liberation of your people is a task of righteousness. That's something that you take up as a baton passed down from the ancestors. You can't pick up the baton of the ancestors and then go marry the same people. That's the reason we don't know who they are today. The reason we don't know our culture. Did y'all forget that our culture, that, that, that our customs, that our language has been stripped from us, our history? Did y'all forget? The people that y'all talk that y'all talking about being with, they got their history. They know their family line. They got their generational wealth built on your ancestors' backs. We don't got time for love. It's time for business. And y'all gonna wait till another George Floyd happened before that start making sense again. Y'all have went back to sleep and my live is here to raise your consciousness. Y'all have gone back to sleep and my live is here to raise your consciousness. Brothers and sisters, tap like, tap like. If your lips are thicker than a snicker, if you got a big forehead and you wear bonnets to bed, I need you to tap like, <laughs> share the live. Get the people in here. Get your people in here. It's time to wake up. All right, y'all. I'm gonna bring some people up here. We're gonna have we're gonna have uh, some questions. We are not here to educate you. 
We are not here to educate you. Any, any European descendants that want to come up here and have this conversation, we welcome you. Come on up. Let's talk about it. We are going to ask you questions. We are here to be educated by you as to, as to what y'all say when there's no black people around. That's what we want to hear so that we can organize on our side of the chessboard in an understanding of our current predicament, our current situation. We are not going to have you come up here and say that you come here to be educated because we're not going to do that labor for you. We're not going to do that labor for you. We're not going to do the labor so that you know what sound bites to use to get access to black spaces and come up and say little things like, oh, we need to do uh, uh, our biracial daughter's hair. You know, that's things y'all have heard on TikTok and you take it back to your people so that y'all can all sound like y'all give a damn. We ain't here to we ain't here to teach you that. We ain't here to help you infiltrate. What's going on? Black is beautiful. What's going on, sister? Nothing. I just want to tell people there's somebody that said, go back to Africa. Well, how did we get here? We were forced here, sir. We were forced here. If it was up to us, we would have stayed in Africa. You go back to where you came from, sir. You, you you're a you're an immigrant too, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm I'm a shut up for now. It's not just that. It, listen, I love it when they tell me to go back to Africa. I'll go back to Africa. I'll go back to Africa right now. Get your ass up out of Africa. Get get you and your folks up out of Africa, and we will go back to Africa. Is that a deal? Can we do that? Can you get your Muzungu, Urugu, mel mayonnaise, unseasoned, unmelanated, bleach behinds up out of Africa, and then we will gladly go back. Decolonize, stop colonizing our, our continent. Stop colonizing our resources to build your privilege for a phenotype don't nobody give a damn about because you can't even survive the sun. Y'all fall asleep in the sun and then got to go to ER. If you could fall asleep in the sun and need to go to ER, that means you somewhere you're not supposed to be. Uh, ba Impu, what's going on? Give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. 26. Hey. He is my pronoun. Just he. I'm a man. I don't really right. and, and your race? My race. I'm black. Talk to us, brother. Hey, it's a lot of y'all up in these comments that's if you really want us to go back, I really need y'all to stick to what y'all saying and go back to Europe. Because y'all not from here. Because it's a lot of people up in these comments. I'll, I'll gladly go back to Africa. That's my plan anyway. But y'all need to leave too. You get on a flight right now to go back to Africa. It's going to look like when you when you get in line to get on that plane, it's going to look like you're going to a hockey hockey tournament. Because mm -hmm, they steady want to be over there, but steady talking about we need to go back, but steady want to go over there. Right. If we complaining about you and you want us to go back to Africa, but then as soon as we land, it looked like we had a hockey game, then that's that's still the problem. If you think that's a real solution, get your ass about Africa. Let's start there. All right, I'm going to go. To the next guest, the Boric Boricua. Give us your age, race, and pronouns. My age is 23. My race is black, and my pronouns is she, her. All right, talk to us. Okay, so I am actually a product of an interracial couple, and I will say that um, it was hard growing up because my mom didn't understand what I needed not just with my hair, but everything. Like she didn't really get it. And I had to get all my stuff to my dad. And once they got divorced, I was pretty lost. I wasn't really connected with my black side at all. 
So I will say if you are going to have kids with a black man or a black woman, make sure you educate yourself when having a child. Make sure you know how to do their hair. Make sure you teach them about their their past and what's what's gone in the community. Because, you know, as a mixed kid, I feel like I, I don't connect to either side sometimes. So I will say it does impact your child. It really does. So please educate yourself before having kids and mixing. That's all I wanted to say. Don't mix. Don't mix at all. Don't even well, do I it. Don't I don't care if you educated or not. I don't care what book you read. Don't Wait. do it. So you believe that people shouldn't do it at all? Yes, I believe that too. So basically, I'm a disgrace because I'm a mixed child? No, nobody said that. No, We're not hating on that. you, sister. No, We're no. She said she was black. But then she said she don't feel accepted by both sides sometimes. Do you yeah. classify yourself as a mixed child? I, class I classify myself as a black person no matter what at the end of the day. All right. But so then I'm no matter is, what means what that mixed. That I have missed out on sometimes on my black culture because of my mother. That's all I'm so saying. So have I. Yeah. I'm monoracial. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the black community. <laughs> we have all missed out on our, on our people. We have all missed out on our history. We have all had to unpack uh, self-hatred and inherent anti-blackness because of the conditions forced on us by the West. I'm sorry, I'm eating. Yeah, so no. anybody who- That don't make you special. That's just, that's just part of being black. Yeah, that's how I felt. But to all the people who are mixing, just educate yourself, please. Please educate yourself because you don't want to have a kid that's different and then don't know how to teach them nothing like or i don't know it's just horrible they can't teach us nothing they can't teach us nothing only thing they're going to teach you is is how to uh, uh feel comfortable in a white environment don't do it don't do it education is insufficient i know that's right education is not enough go educate your people stop trying to find ways to to um to have quote unquote, relationships with people you have an advantage over, given the climate of, of racism, white supremacy, and then call yourself one to educate yourself on what we're doing. Y'all been trying to educate yourself on what we've been planning since the Wait, plantation. I have a question, what if they fall in love? No. This ain't about love, Man. this ain't about love, this is about business. Oh. Until our people, <laughs> until our people is free, until George Floyd, until Sade Robinson, until, uh, 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 Takia, uh, Sister Takia, I forgot her last name, Sister Takia, that was unalive by the police in the Kroger parking lot until, um, until uh, the sister that was unalived uh, through, through somebody's front door for knocking on a door in Florida, until all that is in the past, until Breonna Taylor is in the past, until all that has faded from memory, this ain't about love, we don't got time for love, and one black person ever walked up to a white individual and it was just for love. Because when you walked up to her, you didn't know if she was going to scream and call the police. So the first thing you had to do was think of your survival. You ain't think of love okay, first. Okay, wait, now I have a question. Okay, so you're telling me when, you, when you're interacting with a white man, woman, you're scared that she might call the police? Yes. What really? is so hard oh, about what are you yes? About? What are you talking about? Yes. Yes. Any, any white, like any kind of white woman? Ma'am, yes. yes. Every white person. Every white person, you was on my panel before. This is Black is Beautiful, and yes. I told you that we accept you in this, this, um, this, in our community. But yes. what, what we're doing is something totally different. That's the oppressor. We okay. still oppress to this day. Okay, so how can you fall in love with somebody who, who benefits off your downfall? You have to understand that. How? How can you fall in love with somebody who's like that? Well, I understand like not falling in love with a racist, but what about the white people who like don't they all racist? Race? Which they ones are not racist, racist please? Okay, so at? like for example, like let's say because I, I graduated in 2019 in my high school, it was a very diverse high school, right? And everyone like mixed, like it was Asians, were uh, white people, mix, and we all were friends. And I didn't never. We all was friends. Yes. Okay. All right. So y'all was friends. Okay. That's cute. That's cute. Y'all was friends while your people was oppressed. Well, so you're, you mm -hmm. listen now. If if there was a racist person, hell no. I will call them out. Let them know they're all racist. 
she don't know how racist. racism works. It's all right. She says she don't be she don't be around black folks enough. She, I mean, that the, the police question was telling enough that you ain't been around enough brothers and sisters. Well, racism is. I mean, my family. racism is different from um pre- prejudice, sister. It's totally different. Okay. And I would say that all of them have the preconceived notion that your ass is black when they look at you. I, I ain't never been around what white folks know how are fully educated on racism. You know how I know? Because when racism mm-hmm. isn't happening, they, they get uncomfortable. When racism isn't happening, they get uncomfortable. Didn't they get uncomfortable when they seen a black woman as, as the little mermaid? Didn't they get uncomfortable when they see a black man in the new Assassin's Creed game, video game? So if you sit down, you and a white man sit down at a table and you explain to him your feelings, explain to Why him- Why would I do that? that? That would never happen. Why would I do that? That would never happen. They, oh, wow. they, they get off on our trauma. You haven't been in enough of these lives to see that they get off on our trauma. No, you guys are educating me and I, I'm sorry if I'm sounding ignorant. I'm only trying to learn. We ain't mad at you. Exactly. If we was mad at you, you wouldn't be up here right now. Nah, yeah, we ain't mad at you. Well, no, you all about to be mad at me then, I guess. Oh boy, she must got a a, a, a muzungu, man. Go ahead, give us your age, race, and pronouns, Faith. Forty female, black. I mean, I'm going. I'm I'm backing up the board equal because I went to high school with a little bit of everybody. I I've, I've been out of high school over twenty years. My best friend that I grew up with is white, and you know what? Still my best friend to this very day. We've been best friends since we were nine months old. No. What has she done to dismantle this system? What <sighs> see that see that's that's what makes me upset. No, you don't even no 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 this just answer the, the question. Answer the question, Faith. What has she done to make first of all, your first of all, community safe? First of all, first of all, it's not a she. First of he, all, it's not a she. Or whatever. What have they done to make your community safer? What have they done to 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 build power within your community we all grew up together in the same community so i don't know like this whole this whole thing i'm talking about the black black community community. yes i know what has she done for your people i don't care where you live at you still black you still your people is still your people what What has she done what is my as someone that hold on hold on what has she done as someone that benefits from the oppression of your people no matter where you live at she still benefits from oppression that happened to your people and your ancestors. What has she done to actually empower your people? I need to know because you're saying this person is a friend and a friend is not just going to let someone else live in oppression if they have a, a, a say so. And how and how are you still oppressed? Do you have a job today? All right. And that's where we end the conversation. She don't even know. Yeah, yep. go ahead. Right. Exactly. Thank you all for the Panther Paul, but I ain't about to do that. We ain't about to yeah, do that. She, We're not up here to embarrass She's very harmful. She's very harmful. Go on about, about with your white friends, ma'am. Go on yeah. about with your white I got friends. To, I got something to say real quick. Y'all mm-hmm. act like y'all the only ones that grow up around white tea people. Like I, I went to school and to I went to multiple schools where there were multiple different races. But guess what? They all treated us. I grew up with this. They treated us like tokens, like uh, token black. Yes, that was real. When I didn't know no better, I was in school in Griffith, Indiana. I had had white tea friends. And one day, all of a sudden, these fools just, oh, I'm cool. I'm this, that, and the third. We sitting at lunch together, going to the movies. All of a sudden, I come back the next year. This white girl that I considered my friend didn't. I didn't want to be with her. I I was always always for my black women, even when I was a kid. She was a friend. This girl gonna look at me and pretty much looked through me to go kick it with her whitey male friends. Come on now. I have a question. Were you guys raised more in the South or the North of America? I live in the North. I live in the North. Midwest. Okay. You're on okay. mute. You're on mute. It don't um, matter uh, where they was raised at. They will friend you, but they won't end your oppression. They will exactly. fuck you, but they won't free you. 
So sitting here talking about who's racist and who's not, I need to see the ones that are anti-racist. We're the ones that are dismantling this system. There's exactly. 200 million white sea Americans in the United States. So you telling me that less than 1% of them are racist? Because 1% would mean 2 million of them should be getting together, should be organizing, and should be working to dismantle racism. It has been going on for 400 years, and they know about it. They know about it. So then, People where, is their organization? where is their organization? Where is their Black Lives Matter? Huh? Why, why is it that we have to shout Black Lives Matter? Why aren't they shouting Black Lives Matter? Why, where, 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 where are they? Because I know where they at. I know where they organize. They organize for Project 2025. They are they organize for the Republican National Convention. They organize for the for the Democratic National Convention. They organize for Make America Great Again. They organize for the Proud Boys. They organize in, in Nashville, Tennessee with the Neo Schmatzies. They know how to organize. So where are the good ones that you're talking about? There are still sundown towns. You can look this up. There is a whole website that are markers for us to make sure that we don't accidentally go through these motherfuckers crossing through from state to state. There are markers mm -hmm. for sundown towns. There are so many black people that go missing traveling the United States. Y'all talk about free us from what? Free us from them. That's is exactly what we mean. Come on. Mm -hmm. And for the people who say that black people are racist, okay, so why aren't you guys marching for White Lives Matter then? Come on, seriously? If you guys are so oppressed, why aren't you marching for your own lives? I don't see y'all, okay? Just because you got your little feelings hurt don't mean nothing. You don't know what racism racism is, so therefore you should shut your mouth. All right. Next guest, El Macho, give us your age, race, and pronouns. Hey, um, uh, sorry for my English. I uh, I am a French uh, speaking girl, so she uh, and uh, uh, what did you ask my age? Yeah, race, age, race. What's your race? Age, race. Uh, I am African, a North mm -hmm. African. I am from Tunisia. All right, talk to us. Do you know Tunisia? Yeah, I do. Are you a black Tunisian? I'm not black Tunisian, but I'm, you know, I'm not the white Tunisian, you know, but we- Okay, so you're colonizing, all right. Why you say you're African if you're white? <laughs> this is the problem. What, what I wanted to, to, to come and speak with you because this is so insulting uh, to, because I, I, I know I get it, don't boot it no. yet, man. I want to hear oh, what you're going to say. Can I, can I please? Go ahead, piece? colonizer. Go ahead, colonizer. Yes, I know. I know, hobby. There's no, there's no problem with it. Um, let's just say something. <laughs> I think African-American are so disconnected from history, they don't even understand what happens in the world, the entire world. Yeah, you need to get muted because what you're about to say is <laughs> disgusting. You are being disgusting, <laughs> colonizer. Lord have and I guess been. we do care. You guys, with y'all little nasty, pasty selves, went over to Mama Africa and offed our people just so y'all can have a place to live? Oh, hell no. That's not happening. So for you to come in here and think that you're just going to push your weight around, it's not happening. Go somewhere else. I want to ask you some questions, but um, I, I think I think um, Black's beautiful ate the whole cake. Uh, go ahead, um, uh, El Macho. Did you have anything else to say? Are you finished? Are you done? I'll be back, y'all. I gotta take care of something with my son. All right, peace. Do you, do you know that? Do you know the country named Chad in Africa? Uh, not oh. your Chad with the Joe lines uh, with your American uh, things. Chad, do you know Chad? Are there black people in Chad? All of them are like you. So then, black. so the, so you, then, you do, do you know? Do you know? Do you know Saudi Arabia? You are disconnected. You do are you know Saudi Arabia? Eh? 
So that the fuck of sorry with the what do the Do you know do you know Saudi Arabia? Just Chad, please. Do you know Chad? Are there black people in Chad? Are Chad in Africa? Are there black people in Chad? Are you are you real African? Are there black people in Chad? Yes or no? Uh, so you are just Hold on, please don't interrupt. Don't nobody come no, off mute. I, I was trying to talk, but you attacked me. So please, Chad, do you know what is Chad? Where do you Chad? know if you there know are black Chad? people in Chad? Can African you answer my question? Chad is a country we know the what the Africa. I know everywhere black people exist. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Again, Don't play the no me. purpose flower. Wants I know to everywhere talk. my people exist. I know. I know where I'm from. Don't come up here and try to think you about to educate me on black folks. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. I'm not that kind of African American. Don't do that. All right, let's go to the next guest. Zoe, give us your age, race, and pronouns. I'm 18. I'm black. And my pronouns is she, <laughs> her. All right, talk to us. OK, so basically how I feel is I grew up in an area where, like, people treated me fairly. Like, that's just how it is. But me personally, how I feel about, because you said interracial marriage, I feel like ain't nothing wrong with that. Because to be honest, if you think about it, that's just like saying we went through slavery. We did not go through slavery. Then white people did not was not the ones beating us. We have to blame the... Um... I ain't listening to that. Me Next, either, yeah, that's listen, harmful. listen, I'm not against, I'm well, not against, no. let me tell y'all something. I'm not against opposition uh, to this topic if it comes from truthfulness and facts. Don't come up here. Which she talking about white folks didn't do slavery? Come on now. Let, 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 don't, don't come up here with that. Don't come up here with that. All right. Next guest, uh, Mang Mangani, give us your age, race, and pronouns. She made sense. Uh, yo, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. Any mo moderators, block anyone that thinks uh, they're going to do slavery denial in my life. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. I don't care if she was speaking. She was up here saying that white folks didn't do slavery. We're not doing that. Yeah, that's the only reason I came up here, because I have a bookshelf full of books that can prove she's lying. So Everybody not come up here with misinformation, ma'am. White people know she's lying. They got th these books that you that you talking about. If you talking about the journals from uh, Portugal and Spain and the um the travel yes. records and the and and, and and all the uh, receipts for sale, they even they There's admit museums it. Museums with pieces of ships in there, like let's right. not act stupid. But they also, but but they also are descendants of slave masters, and they so keep this system going. Here exactly so zoe go read some books because you really don't know how anti-black you are right now ma'am you're very anti-black and you need to unpack that can and I you see? will open up your eyes and you will see can i say something what? real quick um you know when the french girl was up here and y'all were like you got you guys kept calling her a name or something i don't know what it was but like Colonizer. A colonizer. And, it, and there was another one, and it's like this. I agree. Mm -hmm. with that, but, yeah, that white people have done this to us, but if we generalize them the way they generalize us, is it like too Ma'am, you, you, you got to be quiet. You got to be quiet. I'm I'm moving on. There's so many right people, there's too many people waiting for people to come up here with nonsense. We're gonna go to the next guest. Mangani, go ahead, give us your age, race, and pronouns. I'm 45, black, Puerto Rican, he, him. Oh, all right, talk to us. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You give us your race. I said you? I'm a black Puerto Rican. Oh, okay, okay. My bad. My, my, my bad, family. Go ahead, talk to us. Yeah, so being a black Puerto Rican, even having a white mother or a, a mother who passes as white, I can tell you that uh, an interracial marriage would make it nearly impossible for the the black person or the person who identifies as black to fully uh, realize like their, their, you know, their struggle for civil rights. Like you just can't do it being married to somebody white. And I'm saying that because my own, my own family is that way. You know what I mean? I've had to tell my mom now as an adult, you know, hey, you talk about this or that situation, you know, in a positive light. 
And now as an adult with my experiences traveling the world and everything, when I look at certain situations, those are like really white supremacist situations. And I say white supremacist because there's a difference between racism. Racism is like an everyday experience for us. White supremacy is something systematic that can be manifested against us from anybody. It could come from even our own people. And a lot of us experience that on a daily basis. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of acknowledgement there of anti-blackness. Um, that is a product of racism, correct? Say again? Would you say anti-blackness within our own community is a product of racism? As a result of racism, we have anti-blackness internalized so, in black people. Is that what you I, mean? I, I, I like to I like to distinguish between racism and white supremacy because racism is the actual belief that one race is superior or inferior to another, you know, physio physiologically, intellectually, et cetera, et cetera. What white supremacy is, it doesn't even it doesn't matter whether or not there's actual racial superiority or inferiority. There's there's an act, there's a force, there's a power behind this philosophy. So it's, it's beyond, you know, just a simple belief that I'm bigger than you or I'm better than you. You know what I mean? Where has there ever been racism where white supremacy did not exist? Uh, that's that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is no. You made supremacy. the distinction between racism and white supremacy, and right. I know the two to be intrinsically um, inclined. So they're both tied together. Racism is a uh, system created by white people to control and dominate all non-white people. So that's what racism me, is. So from a, so I've lived in Africa, for example. When you live in Africa, you experience white supremacy that's not technically racism. Africans don't believe that you as a black person are physiologically inferior to them or to another race. But technically, that's racism. politically, they experience philosophically, racism. they experience racism in Africa, bro. They experience racism in Africa, bro. I don't know I, what you're I'm not saying they don't experience. Race no, they, no the, the, when, when the name Africa from... is Latin. <laughs> the name Africa is Latin for a reason. There's white supremacy in that land. The borders that are drawn of African nations is because of white supremacy. You think Nigerians woke up? Right. You think Nigerians woke up one day and decided to name Yoruba land nigga area? You think that's what they wanted to do? They they said, "Hey guys, we all black. Let's name this the land of the niggas." in in uh in latin you think they decide to do that no that's racism white supremacy right there in africa whether it's through colonization whether it's through discrimination or prejudice it is the same thing it operates the same systemically globally globally it is a global system all right we're gonna go to the next guest life is a beach give us your age oh you you family what's going on sir no, I'll go ahead and give it so nobody be saying, oh, you're giving special treatment. So 54, right. I'm a whole black woman all day long and she, her. So let me tell you something. You know, I rarely come up in here, but you know, when I do, number one, I think it's disgusting when people try to erase uh, slavery, saying that it didn't happen and things like that. We have books, we have pictures, we have literary content where they interviewed slaves, people that were actually enslaved. Um, we have pictures of us um, uh, like we're strange fruit with you know what's around our neck and, and little children laughing and smiling and getting photo opportunities. How dare you, how dare your raggedy ass say slavery didn't happen and we're still not affected till this very day. This whole legal system, the whole um, proclamation, everything the everything that's set up is in their favor. All they did was freed us and say, well, let's make some laws to still keep the status quo. So go set your crazy behinds down. 
talking about. Yeah, talking about slavery didn't happen. So that's the one thing I wanted to say. Another thing I want to mm -hmm. say with these people who love in these so-called love, love this and that, you know what's going to be funny to see? These so-called people that's with these people that they shouldn't be with when a, when, when a war go down or we need, when things get real, who going to be jumping ship? Who going to mm -hmm. be jumping ship? See the, see the YT man with his so-called black wife. He going to be jumping ship going over to the Proud Boys. She going to be jumping ship trying to come over there with us. You gonna see so and, and probably leave the kids right in the middle. Say the hell with them. Mm -hmm. Jump the ship. So let's talk about that. Where you gonna go when he jumps ship? Where you gonna go when she jumps ship? You gonna just be stuck in the middle. Let's see if your love gonna save you then. Let's see if your love gonna save you then. Um, mm -hmm. let's see what else. I wrote some notes here. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's see how I, I really would love for you to speak on that, brother legend. Where they gonna go when it goes down? And where you gonna go? What you gonna just stay in the house? They gonna come drag you out your house. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Where you gonna go when that when that race revolution, that war happens, and you gotta pick a side? Don't come bothering us then. Don't come hollering and screaming then. We don't want you. Oh, and another thing. Let's talk about these so-called friendship crumbs. I'm tired of people talking about their little raggedy friendship crumbs. Oh, they don't act like that. Like it's a daggone, um, we should be happy. They don't act like that. Like it's a privilege that they don't act like that, that they got to try to not act like that. Miss me with that bullshit. Don't tell me about they don't act like that. They don't have it in them. They don't have it in them and taking your little personal friendships. That's the truth. What have they done for you? If you're their so-called friend from the goddamn cradle to the crib, the, from the cradle, when have they said, you know what? She's, she's really my good friend. Let me go down here and write a letter. Let me start a group. But they'll go save a goddamn pet uh, dog or the whales. But they've been knowing you from the cradle. What have they done for your raggedy ass? Nothing. All they will do is give you some friendship crumbs and call it a day. Miss me with that crap. But anyway, let me go take my blood pressure pill and I'll be listening. All right, sister. Thank you very much. I know that's right. Some of y'all be real confused in Alabama. If we had the Alabama bro boat brawl tomorrow, some of y'all be in the middle, don't know who to, who to hit them with a chair or what. You would be, y'all be confused. All right. Uh, uh, Sister Ty, you already spoke, but did you want to uh, talk to the topic? Yeah, I'll definitely add to the topic. Um, so I definitely do believe that they're unethical, not to mention there are tons of studies that have been done by psychologists that show the instabilities within these relationships, from friendships to intimate partnerings. It's, it's always an uneven power dynamic. That's all I'm going to say. I heard that. That's facts. As long as that power dynamic exists, where one person can have an advantage over the exploitation, have an, an advantage given to them by the exploitation of someone else, they're not friends. That's yeah, not true. And they're friend. even seeing it with kids from the ages of like 11 to 17. They see the relationship start to break down once the black child can begin to recognize the overt racism. Right. And then their, their, their white counterparts not checking it. Because contrary to what you guys believe, there are no good ones. If there were good ones, we wouldn't continue to deal with racism. I heard that. I heard that. That's facts. All right. Yeah. Um. Don't forget to keep tapping like, y'all. Keep tapping like. We need to get up to 50K likes, y'all. So tap like, tap like. Or I'm about to put the comments. I'm about to get rid of the comments, man. So keep tapping like. Share the live if your lips are thicker than a snicker and you love and you know the smell of blue magic hair grease and a hot comb. I need you to share the live uh, with a brother or sister. All right. Uh, smart sister. What's going on? Hey, Lord. Today been rich on these <laughs> lives I've been on today. Lord have mercy. What did y'all have a pretending up here earlier? Did y'all have a pretending? Uh, not, not, not up here early. Not to, not in this live. Oh no! Oh, okay. Hold on, my bad. My 
Um, yeah, now nah, we ain't have a pretendian up here today. Um, we we had some of the other live, uh, you know, some uh, FBA folks, but now nah, we good. Oh, oh Lord have mercy. Well, today one, I was on one live. I think uh, a brother, this patriotic bullshit. Um, <laughs> he's on there. Well, in America, we've got to find a way for us to come together and uh, work and work together through this. And uh, what? How did you feel about Trump being uh, the t attempted assassination? And I burst out laughing. So then that's when he threw me off the path. <laughs> 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 what is the fuck to me? And oh, oh my God! See, you would be the very person that sitting up here talking about the white man. I was like, no, he did not. I said, why are y'all still wasting so much time? decide which massa you want mm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. that's what it boils down to and i said and all of y'all if we can't at this point understand that this shit is all controlled about money i don't know what you know i i, I just cannot understand how these people want to keep caping for these folks and riding with them when i told them i said brothers used to come back from world war ii and getting on alive in their uniform mm -hmm. don't tell me about patriotism we have been the most patriotic people in america forever if you can be on mm -hmm. in your uniform coming home from fighting for these damn people and you want to sit up here and tell me about who you need man oh my god i just I just can't sometimes. I just can't. Then mm. the old words. And all these folks come up here caping for these white folks in these these lives. Uh, and talking about whether something is ethical or unethical. Why can't you see what that where that's coming from? I just would really like to know from a, a, a caping ass black person. Because white people, I, you already know what they're going to do. Like I said, they're living their purpose. Mm -hmm. They are living their purpose. They're doing what they were meant to do in their mind and in everybody else's damn mind for that matter. But what I can't understand, see, I, in these interracial groups, I don't, I don't trip on the white person. I'm looking mm -hmm. at you, black man or woman, that can swallow <laughs> everything that's happened to your folk for your own personal gratification that's what 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 i can't understand how can and i how can you not see mm -hmm. and what is still going on did you see this story recently a uh, brother uh got Ooh. arrested off of a um a flight when uh and the uh fbi got on the plane handcuffed him or whatever when all he did you know was politely and somebody uh, asked the, the damn um, flight attendant for some fucking ice. Did you hear about this? No, I didn't hear about that one. Oh, he's an ex-football player mm -hmm. on a plane with his black wife mm -hmm. and their three black children. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the flight attendants was racist as hell. You know, and he, uh, the kids was playing on the thing and asked for some ice, politely asked, may I have some ice, sir, or please, or whatever. And this damn flight attendant gonna get mad and half throw the stuff. And the football player brother was still calm. Was mm. like, I don't know what the problem is, but you know, all she asked for was some ice. Do you know when the plane lane landed, the damn FBI was coming in? Uh, what? handcuffed in him and never said we're doing this because of this where you blah 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 nothing just because a damn flight attendant then told the, the pilot I guess and they waiting to cuff the brother when he nicely asked didn't wow. want belligerent at all can you believe that shit mm -hmm. well yeah we can but I'm just saying you mm -hmm. living in a world like that where your child can't even ask for some fucking ice on the plane and you want to sit up here and talk about love is love? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. That's all. You know, it's insane. The cognitive dissonance is so strong till I, it's like we getting worse. Some of us are getting worse. 
Mm -hmm. it, it, a white man can't come and slap you upside your head no more than that for nothing. And you got Popo coming to get you off a plane for ice. Mm. But you want to sit up here and tell me uh, love is love. You get the man. Okay, I'm going to calm down. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> I heard that, Auntie. This ain't about love, y'all. Read the prompt up above. This live don't got nothing to do with love. I need y'all to love and keep tapping like, though. I need y'all to keep tapping like on the live so we get the 50K. This, this live don't got nothing to do with love. We, this, this live is about business. This live is about business. Understand that it says interracial marriages. It does not say interracial love. We could talk about that too, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about business. What's love got to do with it? We're going to the next guest, Victoria. Give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. Hi, um, my age is 21. My race is Mexican, white American. And my pronouns are she, her. All right, talk to us. Um, I wanted to say that I feel like these are really valid questions that you have up here because of the state that we live in right now. <laughs> um, I live near like the Twin Cities area near Minneapolis um, and I saw um, like all of the <laughs> terrible um, tragedies that happened, especially on the George Floyd um, death and how it affected so many families and people and just like watching that video and knowing that that happened in our state, which I thought was relatively progressive. Like, I, I also don't understand how white people can't see how we are still so fucked up as a country when it comes to racism and systemic racism, like within our government. Um, I think somebody did a really good job explaining it in a video that I saw. And they were like, <laughs> compared um, black Americans experience to and versus white Americans experience to like a monopoly game. Like imagine you're playing and for the first 200 years, not only could you not collect for yourself, but everything that you did in every dime. And then for the next hundred years, you're allowed to build some things, this or that, but then everything that you worked for, every home, every development that you placed got burned down. Because that's what we, that's what they did. That That's what they did. That's what white people did. They burned down black communities. They destroyed black communities. They still do it. And then you expect it to like be fair all of a sudden because for the past 50 years, we haven't had Jim Crow laws and we haven't had like segregation laws like I think it's just baffling that people still don't understand that people's grandparents were slaves people's parent like great grandparents and grandparents were also indentured servants and they were also facing these battles so of course kids are going to be raised in a in a place where they are afraid <laughs> sorry okay all that being said do you feel like you understand racism how it operates i feel like that i can continue to learn more and more every day i also had a question um oh, a question. i wanted i wanted you to talk more about like what we can do what i can do like more in my own community as far as like helping black communities. I work with kids with autism and I work with a lot of black kids. And I also see the ways in which my coworkers treat those kids differently. And I report it consistently, but like, I just wanna know like more and more what I could do. I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, I, it's hard to like, for some reason it's not focusing. I don't answer questions, I okay. ask them. So Got I'm gonna you. ask you a question that might answer your question. Um, have you ever heard of the, um, 
the ozone layer and do you know about mm -hmm. how global warming is operating yeah are you aware of any initiatives or or um methods to fix any of that like uh electric cars and um lowering co2 emissions um i like not specifically but i know they exist okay um in the 60s they used to uh they used to uh have a movement called save the whales because they were whaling so much that the whale population was decreasing worldwide because they would use whales to make oil and um have you ever heard of that save the whales you might be a little too young no i have i've actually that yeah i have done research about that okay so when the white community was causing harm to the planet, did they ask the whales how to save the whales? Did they ask the trees how to fix global warming? No. <laughs> okay. Maybe you can find your answer in there somewhere. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to offend anybody. All right. Um, do you have anything else? No. All right. I'm gonna go to the next guest, Adwa. Give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. Hey, I'm 48, and um, my pronouns are she, her. All right, and your race? I'm black. All right, talk to me. <laughs> talk to her sister. Anyway, so um, I'm originally an African. I've been living in the state for quite a long time, and I have experienced racism in all fashions. And I have a lot of forehand experiences about it. Uh -huh. I know it exists. It exists and sometimes it saddens my heart. I quite remember the first time I went to Ghana in seven years after living in the state, I felt relieved. You know, I was like, okay, I don't have to look over my shoulder over nothing because it's all black people, you know, and it felt for once in my lifetime, I felt good after living in America for quite a long time. And um, here's my thing. When it comes to the issue of love, you know, or, or marriage, interracial marriages, I asked, I was, I actually have two phones. So I was on the other phone and I saw a black lady with a white husband and um, their baby. And they were wearing this shirt that says, we, are, we ride with Trump and whatever. And I'm not saying Trump is bad or Biden is bad. When it comes to whiteness, I categorize, you know, I feel racism is resides with them. Because if you're gonna tell me that you never had anything to do with racism because you were you are 50 years old or 45 years old or 20 years old, no. It runs in your spirit, it runs in your blood, and then the measures and everything in place still guard and protect you, your whiteness, and then it, it frowns upon we, the black people, you know. So if you are not doing anything to dismantle these measures, then you are a part of it. Why am I saying this? Because I was in a relationship with somebody who was white. He and his children were the only people amongst their family that were, um, you know, didn't buy the racist and con uh, conservative ideas. But then the point is they cannot do anything because if your entire family, your entire extended family reside with, you know, I, I agree with the things that doesn't help black people in this country, then where do you stand? But then at the same time, just like you said, it's business. To me, it, it was part business and it was part liberating for me because our brothers, you know, when I say our brothers, I mean black people, black men in general, sometimes you feel like you know they hate their kind so when it comes to the issue of relationship and marriage i feel like in the same way that we don't have a choice but we have to work for you know do white jobs we should be given the opportunity to also choose between you know where we want to reside if i have my own way i will i will definitely be with my kind but here's a situation that you know the situation is kind of a little dicey and then you know, since love, to me, love is universal. I feel like when it comes to that aspect or when it comes to interracial marriage, you know, 
we should we should be lenient and then allow people to choose who they want to be with you know but that's my that's my thoughts so all right so this live is not to tell anyone who they can and cannot be with you can do whatever you want right you know? um if we talk about cigarettes being unhealthy that right. don't mean you can't smoke them go ahead smoke them exactly <laughs> At the detriment of your own life, right? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, we're talking about what's ethical and what's unethical. Just because something's legal don't mean it's ethical. Exactly. You just talked about how your people is in oppression and how uh, racism is inherently going to take their side. So what does it say to the black man or black woman when they can love those that have benefited from their exploitation during their oppression? What does it say? It doesn't say... Uh, that just black men are the ones that suffer with self-hatred. That self-hatred was taught to us by our oppressor in the first place. That self-hatred yeah. that the black man has is not, it's not for the black woman. He don't, he don't, he don't hate you. He hates himself. When he, when he hates himself, then by proxy, he's going to also hate uh, his woman, a reflection of himself. And the same thing for sisters. There, there are plenty of uh, sisters that have been brainwashed into self-hatred. We see that all the time. But that in itself is not the problem. The problem is the people that have uh, created this uh, systemic self-hatred taught to black people and disconnected them from their past. So, you know, I hear you. People can do whatever they want to do, but I don't make it ethical. And what makes it unethical is that oppression. Now, if we want to talk about, you know, uh, ending oppression, if we want to talk about the oppression is no more. And when someone says, what, what race are you? And you say, what do you mean by race? You mean uh, you know, running a race? No, I didn't run any races today. <laughs> what is what is race? When when that happens, uh, pink people and brown people can get together and do whatever they want at that point. They're just people. But right, right now, as long as there is black, as long as there is white, black people will re remain at the bottom of the social hierarchy. That being the case, it is unethical for someone that can take advantage of you in a system put in place that they benefit from to be in a uh, relationship or a marriage um, that takes uh, wealth away uh, from black people um, and, and, and still call it ethical. We're just here to question the ethics behind it and the power struggle that exists between us. I agree. And thank you for your, um, for your point. All right. Thank you for giving me the platform. Absolutely. Appreciate you coming up, sister. Drew, give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. All right, I am 18, white, and I go by he slash him. All right, talk to us. All right, so uh, I honestly agree with a lot of the points you brought up, but for the my point, on, well, my view on the interracial marriages being ethical or not, I think they're ethically when you're talking about general racism, because general racism is a concept and an idea. But if we're talking systematically, it's definitely unethical, based off of obviously the slave trade, the Atlantic slave trade, Jim Crow laws that were implemented to like suppose and implement oppression upon black people. So I agree with your point on it being very unethical for systemically rates and when you're talking about systemic racism but what's your view on it if we're talking about like as racism as a concept like general racism uh do you believe that racism is systemic i do okay so is general racism systemic i feel like it isn't i feel like it's a different concept so please explain to me your definition of general racism General racism is just like any race can be racist towards like another race for like any points, like like a, their values, their beliefs, their culture, their anything that goes pertains to them or they used to pertain to their culture. Like even, um, I don't know, a good example off the top of my head, Please. but yeah, that's what I think. No example? Not off the top of my head at the moment. I have where, one. But... Where, where has racism existed where white supremacy didn't? Uh, Barbary pirates took 300,000 white uh, Europeans, but that's nowhere near the scale of the Atlantic slave trade. Um, at the time of the Barbary pirates, there was no, well, when it started, uh, there was no such thing as white. Uh, yeah. That's something that came about during the Europeans. So um, yeah. where was it written? I, I, I guess maybe you know something that I don't. Where was it written that they were enslaving um, white people because they were white? 
Oh, you gotta, oh, I just got proven wrong in the comments. She said it was based off her religion. Thank you for correcting me. Oh, I have no, I have no uh, opposition then. <laughs> I'm sorry for the wasting your time. All right. Well, yeah, I agree with it. It's very informational live. Thank you. Israel, what's going on, brother? What's going on, my brother? How you doing, man? Peace. I'm well, man. Good to hear your voice. Um, you. Yeah, same. Same to you, bro. What? Okay. All right. Um. So, uh, what I wanted to say was, uh, the sister said earlier that um, the, she was with a white man, and although the white man and her son wasn't racist, everybody else in their family was. Yeah, right. That's what it's too. That's how they uh, work, that's how and that's how they gaslight us. And what that is is it's it's fake support. Because as long as the system works for white people, they need one or two of them to fake be on our side. Because they know it. As long as it's working for them, they don't care. So they can they can sacrifice themselves to pretend to be on our side and still benefit. So so those are just gaslights. Um, what I wanted to say was. In America, we're specifically talking about us and our people in America. Who loved who first? Did white men love black women first in America? Did black women love white men first in America? Did black men, who, did white women love black men first in America? Who loved who first? We're talking about the people who graped us on the way from Africa all the way to America. Then when we got to America, great men in front of the women until he was too weak to do anything, then great the women in front of the weak men where he couldn't do nothing about it. So how is it ethical for the people who did, who, who graped us as soon as we got off the boat to now we love them? How did this happen? When and what year did we start loving them willingly? Mm. What year did that happen? <laughs> So this is this this is all they did was manipulate what they're doing. Interracial marriages is black men sellouts who were manipulated. Um, and now they want white women and um uh black men, black women sellouts who were also manipulated. Stockholm syndrome on both sides. The the weakest people have manipulated the people that everybody else in the world likes to like them because nobody likes them. Nobody likes white people. <clears throat> when when white people go to Arab, when they go to the Middle East, nobody's like, ooh, white people. When they go to China, nobody's like, ooh, white people. Nobody wants them. So everybody wants us. Everybody in the world wants black people. So if they can manipulate the people that everybody wants to want them back, because nobody wants them, <clears throat> it's all a mental game. We don't like them naturally. They've manipulated us to like them. <laughs> they, they have false power, which is money and politics. But if you take money and politics away, they're not stronger than us. They're not faster than us. They're not smarter than us. They don't have any real power to do anything. If the dollar lost all its value today, all the real men would be out here doing what we need to do because they can't do anything. That's why they manufacture power. We don't like them. Our women don't like them. Our women like that fake power they have, which is money, which the value of that goes and comes. So if war breaks out where the value of the dollar is no more, can this man protect you when his money can't? <clears throat> no, I this white that. man cannot protect you because he's weak. <clears throat> mm. So, so yeah. Yes, sir. Israel going to eat the plate, tell you that right now. Israel been coming on my lives for a minute now, so I already knew it was about to happen. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate it, 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 That was enough said, you feel me? <laughs> for sure, bro, for sure. Yes, sir. All right, Jacob, give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. Shalom. Um, I'm 39 years old. I'm black, and I'm a he. All right, talk to us. Yeah, um... A lot of people who know my stance as an as an Israelite, so I don't gotta go too much into that, but of course we're not supposed to be dating outside of our our race, tribe, or ethnicity. That's what I believe. I follow the Bible. And I believe that um 
you can't be pro-black and date outside of your race. I mean, listen to the word pro. I mean, but um, mm-hmm. the young lady that was up here a while ago, I, I, I've been sitting up here a while listening to everybody, and I respect everybody's beliefs. But um, colonized minds, that's what a lot of us have. And I use that terminology very loosely because that's all I see when somebody describes their narrative of what happened to them or what didn't happen to them and trying to say that racism never existed or don't exist anymore just because they never experienced it is so stupid to me. And I apologize. But you can come down to where I'm where I'm at because I have sundown towns literally around me in Florida. So if you want to experience racism, I can show you some spots to, to come down here and experience racism all day. Um it's crazy to me how people, I mean, my people, are are lost just because somebody smiles in your face or gives you a handout or tell you that we're friends now. So all, all of a sudden, everybody's cool. Everybody can get along. We all love each other. Forget the 400 years of oppression, beating, segregation, what they did to our kids. They literally hung us on trees and ate us. Mm. Forget, forget all that, you know. Like let's all sing "Kubaya" and hold hands. Black people, we always have to be the ones to fix it. Why does the oppressor have to fix it? Why? I just don't understand that. I'm gonna land my plane because I ain't gonna wrap you up too much, brother. Hey, I heard that. I heard that. That's the kind of Israelite I like. You know what I'm saying? The brothers, the brothers with some consciousness. Thank you, brother. Uh, Timothy, what's going on, family? Hey, what's going on, brother? Uh, living lavish, how about yourself? <laughs> always, always, always. Greetings, man. Uh, go ahead and talk to us. Yeah, um, are interracial marriages between black and white people ethical? No, they are not. Uh, there's always going to be that power dynamic there. So, therefore, in and of itself, uh, that uh, power dynamic always existing means that you never could actually engage in an ethical in I would even argue consensual um, relationship with a uh, YT person because the entirety of the society that we live in is based off of racism, YT supremacy, and they have created the entirety of the constructs that exist here for the purpose of benefiting YT people to the destruction of black people. So how is it possible that you can then be the victim of all of this oppression and the people that benefit from your oppression, all of a sudden you say, well, you know what? I actually love you, even though the entirety of my life has been literally orchestrated to only see whiteness as this unimaginably amazing thing. Like, it's just not, it, it doesn't go hand in hand. Like, how do you not know that you aren't being brainwashed into thinking that? That's, but let me see. Uh, can you be pro-black and marry non-black people? Nope, you cannot be. The being pro-black means you are prioritizing uh, what's within the best interest of the black community as a black person. So if you are marrying and dating outside of the black community, then guess what? You just did not prioritize what's within the best interest of the black community as a black person. So, boom, immediately disqualifies you from being pro-black. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's that's my plan. I heard that. Exactly. Everybody check out Brother Timothy's uh, TikTok page, man. He got a lot of content for brothers and sisters to educate themselves. Education, just like love, is one of the 10 areas of people activity. There are 10 different ways that people groups can come together, 10 different activities that they do when they come together. In all these areas, there is an influence of white supremacy. Those areas are economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, war, and health. And uh, when we talk about the experience of racism, don't tell me that you have not experienced racism when I ask you to name three African kings pre-colonization, and you cannot name me three. If you cannot name one industry that is uh, dominated and controlled by black people, by African people, then do not tell me you don't you don't experience racism because education is one of those areas of people activity where you were not taught your own history so you don't know three kings pre-colon pre-colonization that existed on the continent of africa if you don't know 
then you don't know yourself. And who's, whose idea was it for you not to know yourself? Don't tell me you don't experience racism and you can't name one industry that is controlled where, where black people have the means to hire, fire, and the means of production. If you don't know any, if you can't name any of that, then my friend, you experience racism. Let's go to the next guest. Jazzy, give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. Hi, um, I am 24 years old. I'm a black and I, my pronouns are she, her, I'm a woman. All um, right, talk to us. I also have my husband here with me, actually. I don't usually do this, but we just so happen to scroll onto your live. And he actually, he's African. He was born oh, in I'm about to say, okay. Yes, yeah, so, and um, we've been married a year, but we scrolled upon your live and we were like, okay, yes, this is the truth. And we heard Israel talking earlier too. And we were like, he is just, he didn't leave nothing on the plate. He didn't, he didn't leave he nothing sure on the plate. He sure did. <laughs> but to answer your question, most definitely, I feel like an interracial marriage is not ethical. I feel like um, if you really were in your marriage, if you really were trying to prioritize what was best for your people, if you really were trying to prioritize what would be the best for a child. This is what racism sounds like. JD, do not come on my panel talking over a black woman. Go ahead, sister. This is what racism sounds like. Are you going? Bye. No, I'm not racist. I'm not saying that I'm better than white people. What I'm saying is what's for the best in the black community is for you to have a black father and a black mother. If you are not a black person, why would you be the best alternative for a black child? Why? Because there are things that you personally cannot give that child. So even within marriage, there is a power dynamic between white and black people naturally. So you have to imagine that manifests in a different way in a marriage. Let this be like a white woman and a black man. You know, there's definitely going to be a power dynamic. Just be real about it. So it's, it's just, I feel like that's common sense. And you definitely cannot be pro-black and you're marrying a non-black person because what is it that, it's like, it's one thing if you, you know, love isn't really what we're talking about if you want to put it like that way, but it's something that you looking at in that person that's making you push towards going and having children with them and procreating with this person. And it's not love at first, it's not. Like, you can't tell me you're not thinking. Like, most of these men who end up being athletes and stuff, most of these men go for people who are the white woman. They, that, that's what they do. So mm -hmm. looking at that, there's a reason for it. There's, there's a power play in that. And I'm not saying you can't marry somebody who's white. I'm not saying you can't do that. And I'm not saying a white person can't love you but systematically you have to acknowledge that there is a power play there this person could get away with things that you can't mm -hmm. like you just have to be and it's not even saying that they don't you know um if they break the law you know they're not going to be you know punished like everybody else or they're not going to get arrested if they're out obviously they will but you know that there is a difference like if a white man is walking around with a hoodie on and you know he's just walking around with a hoodie on nobody's really going to think twice about that but if a black man walks into somewhere with a hoodie on everybody going to be looking at him like he did something or they need to be watching him and i'm a light-skinned woman i'm fully black but i'm a light-skinned woman and i witness this day to day it don't matter like i live in college station around a bunch of white folk and i promise you i'm having issues with my neighbors right now and i don't even speak to them I don't even, I literally am very much, you're my neighbor, not my friend. I don't know you. I'm in my house or I'm going where I'm going. I don't need to speak to you. And they make it their mission to get in my business. They make it their mission to make me feel like they have power over me because they've been living here for a certain amount of time or whatever. So you're going to tell me in a marriage, there's none of that. You're going to tell me when you're raising a child with somebody, there's none of that, Uh, you know, I'm, I'm the mom that, or I'm the person that you're supposed to be, you know, looking up to as the child and you're looking up to a woman who's white and that's what's best for the black baby. Mm. Like the way that I idolize my mother, there's no way. There's mm. no way. Absolutely. Y'all see what it sound like when a sister is with a brother and they come together and they have <laughs> black conscience. Y'all see
Hey man, sister, I'll say it to your marriage, man. We we, we we got nothing but love for y'all. We love to see it. And um, you know, that that's what that's what uh this idea of interracial marriage, because it is an idea. It is yeah, something yeah. that was created post-racism, black mm -hmm. oppression. They decided that without us marching, without sicking dogs on us, without mm -hmm. hosing us down in the street, that they would make interracial marriage legal so that they could have access to the bodies they used to have access to uh, legally now uh, mm -hmm. during our enslavement. And um, uh, when they saw that there was uh, black men and black women coming together, this was a way for them to make us feel like we could assimilate into their power structure instead of creating our mm -hmm. own. And I, I, I love to see what you're doing and, and keep, keep, keep loving your brothers. You know what I'm saying? Some of us is knuckleheads, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and uh, shout out to that black man. Keep her safe, brother. You know what to do. Thank you. All right. All right. We're going to the next guest. Yeah. I just uh, want, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, family. I just want to say, um, uh when we were jumping the broom and whatnot let's not forget these savages thought that it was ethical for massa to do your wife before you yep <laughs> these people thought that massa was supposed to do your wife do your daughter do whoever they were supposed to do your wife before you these are the people that are getting us to like them that's it yeah because they knew that when a black man is with a black woman and they create a black family, then love is an emotion that actually has a utility in nature. The utility is that bond, that empathy that we have for each other makes us want to protect and fight for each other. And so they didn't want that to happen. So it was illegal for us to even get married. We had to jump over a broom. And so that's what they've sought to disrupt for so long. And that's what they continue to seek to disrupt. Why? How do we know that? Look at, look at my screen. This show Bridgerton has a sister with a mayonnaise man. This show uh, Little Mermaid got a sister talking about she want to be part of that world with a mayonnaise man. Oh, the black women uh, have the least rate of marrying outside the community. Black women uh, only marry outside the community at 6%. Yet we can think of more than 6% of television shows that have a black woman with a white man. So who's creating that propaganda? Why is it so why is it so overrepresented on television? Who are they trying to propagandize and indoctrinate? It's Let's because they they want us to uh they they got the little mermaid um they got her sweltering over that white boys cuz that's what they want. That's their fantasy. Their fantasy is for us to want them like that. Overboard mm -hmm. want them. Be obsessed with them like they're obsessed with us. We're talking about the same people who were so obsessed that they stole us from Africa. They were so obsessed that when you had your baby, they put their white face in your baby's face. Because you know, when you you know when you have a baby and that baby's young and it looks at this mama in his face, all that love and care that he get, they wanted to steal that from you. So when you had your baby, they took your baby and raised it like theirs so your baby can love them back. Right. <laughs> That's Absolutely. how it start. Yeah. They adopt our kids and raise our kids to love them back. Mm, that's mm. why they purposely give black kids to white parents like there's no black parents in the adoption thing who looking for black kids there's no white parents in the adoption thing who looking for white kids they purposely give white parents black kids because they have to create soldiers to protect them <laughs> is what it is mm -hmm. so when we yeah. getting at them like how we getting at them now the ones who was raised by their white parents to come up here and say well love is love that's exactly what they're creating <laughs> right <laughs> Right. You can't you can't say that you are for your people and then at the same time have a powdered donut in your bed every night. You can't say that because now when you when you want to fight for your people, when it comes time for us to gather together and revolutionize ourselves against our oppressor in some form of retaliation, you now have to think, wait a minute, my wife, what about, what, what, what my kids, though, what are you, you're saying my 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 wife and, and my children that you know, say that they're confused and, and, and don't, they don't have allegiance. The white woman has been consistent, has been consistent with our people in indoctrinating them to not have an allegiance towards liberating other black people. She tells the black man, I love you so my people can love you too. Come with me. I'm different, see? I love you so, so some of them can love you too. 
So then when the black man is with the white woman, he says, he says, oh, no, no, there's some good ones out there. I have a good one. There's some good ones. She goes to the, she goes to the black woman and she says, we're sisters. It's a sisterhood. We need to unite against the men. And, and, she, and, and she, she uses the black woman for her vote. She uses the black woman for revolutionary action to get progress for herself. But then when it's time to talk about medical racism, they're silent. But then when abortion laws, uh, uh, when Roe v. Wade gets re uh, appealed or repealed or whatever, and, and, it, and it's no longer the law of the land, then she turns to black women and says, come march with us. We're women, it's the women's march. Because now I have a problem when I go to the doctor. And then what does she tell the biracial child? The black woman, when she even even the black woman, I'm not saying this is better, but when the black woman has a child with a, a white man, she tells the child, you are black. When the white woman has a child with a black man, she tells the child, you are biracial. When a child does not feel like they are part of the same social group as their mother, they begin to resent the reason that they don't have that closeness, that proximity, that empathy from their mother. They feel that lack of empathy and they begin to resent their black side. They begin to only see the blackness in, in uh, terms of oppression and they begin to have a resentment for it. They begin to see blackness as just their skin color that makes them different than their mom. And so then they come up and they do the same thing. The white woman has also convinced the biracial child that you don't have an allegiance to those people because you're both. You're two at the same time. You're oppressed and oppressor. And that don't make no sense. I'm gonna go to the next guest. Uh, the Mayo, the Mayo life, what's going on? The Mayo life, are you here? I'm so sorry, that was by accident. Oh, okay, all right. That. All right, that's all right. Okay. We got we got more people coming up. Cece, what's going on, sister? Hi, I just wanted to touch on the topic of adoption and foster homes with the, with regards to black children. Um, all of that is literally um, legalized human trafficking and our kids get aged out. They don't even end up with good families. And then our kids end up getting used as trophies. See, our, look at our kids, they're the good one. Um, and they treat them kids like they're trophies like prized animals. They don't treat them like human beings. I know people who take part in this. They go out of their way to find uh, mothers who are struggling and take their children from them. It's a whole, um, it's a whole um, industry. See, see, and so these people in these comments it? saying that, oh, black adoption fixes everything. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to speak on that because I have seen it and I see what these kids go through. A lot of these kids are homeless. They don't have people um, that care for them and they're taken advantage of. They get um, drugged up. Sorry, F1 in the chat. And they are not able to vouch for themselves and they are preyed upon in our communities and hospitals. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what does it say when the people that create the problem position themselves to be the solution? The people that create the the the, the economic disparities and the, the self-hatred and the and just all the reasons that we have uh, that makes it hard for us to come together as a family and, and, and the poverty that puts uh, a child in a, in a dangerous uh, household to turn and make a system where they can now take those children and have them as they own to position themselves as the solution to a problem they created. All right, I'm going to go to the next guest. Dexter, give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. Dexter in Miami, give us your age, race, and pronouns. We cannot hear you. Oh, oh. Can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. Give us your age, race, and pronouns. Okay, yeah. Um, I am um, 54. I'm black. And I don't do the pronouns, but I'm a guy. I'm Dexter. Okay, talk to us. Yeah, so um, when it comes to the, um, the commercials on the interracial couples, that is pretty much, it's propaganda. It's what the government wants. It's called blackwashing. I am an avid YouTube watcher, and I saw just last week, actually, a, um, a documentary on YouTube, and it spoke about how um, 
after slavery, many countries in, uh, in, 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 Af in South America, after slavery, what the, the colonizers did, they basically flooded those countries with white Europeans. They flooded the country with white Europeans, and of course, what's going to happen, um, they encouraged the, um, the interracial marriages. And that's the reason why you have so many mulattoes in places like um, Cuba. Ooh, be careful, be careful with that word, man. Sorry? Uh, be careful with that word. That's outdated language. We, they don't like to be called that. You know what I'm saying? Um, Do you, talk about? you mean I, the Dominicans? Uh, the M word. We don't like that word. Yeah, brother. Just just a heads up. It's actually it roughly translates to like a work mule. So that that's that's like. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I understand. Yeah. I I'm sorry. I understand. I, I mean, I'm I'm even mixed as well myself. You know, but you know, the, these it's always changing. You know, to make people happy. Anyway, getting back to the point. Um, yeah. So what they did was they they whitewashed. It's a way of getting rid of black people, basically. You know, and um, that's also the reason one of the reasons why they're flooding the United States with. And so many Latinos are coming here to the U.S. You know, um, with the with, with the immigration that's coming in, it's basically it's a it's a leftist approach. And if you know who is in charge of our government, um, pretty much, it's pretty much a way of of reducing the black people, the black population, dark skin. So the more mulattoes, the closer to white is what they want. Okay, to try to get rid of black people as much as possible. And uh, hey, that's what's happening. Do you think that should be a legitimate concern of black people? Of course, of course. Why? My, my mother's a dark skinned woman. And I think my, my mother as a dark skinned woman is, is, is beautiful, of course. Okay, um, so to have a, a person, an, another black person say, I prefer not to date any dark skinned women, I prefer white, or I prefer a, a, a as light as possible, what's wrong with the dark skinned woman? My mother's one and my grandmother's one as well. And I'm sure yours was is too. Do you feel like black people are at risk of disappearing? Yes, I do. I do. Off the entire planet? I, yes, of course. What's happening in right now in, in, in the Middle East? You know, um, look, yeah, of course, definitely. Throughout the entire planet. I mean, hey, I don't want to say the word because I know this is your channel. I don't want to get into trouble and I don't want you, you know, your 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 life to get banned or whatever. Um, but yeah, there is an agenda going on and you know it. Everyone knows it, but no one wants to talk about it. OK, um, why is it that you want to get rid of a, a whole population just because? I mean, that's, that, that happened in the 1800s and the early part of the 1900s. This is 2024, and it's happening again now in the age of uh, the internet. I mean, I just basically can't sleep at night, and I know I shouldn't be worried as much, but I just can't sleep at night because of the images I'm seeing. And, and what they, it's, they're getting rid of a certain set of people. If the white supremacy is... Get as strong as possible and get rid of the others. It's white. There's a lot of white supremacy going on right now in this world. And the Western countries are leading it. Okay, so how many people are alive? How many black people live on the continent of Africa? Do you know? I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I can tell you that, um, that Brazil has the highest number of Africans in the, the continent of the 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 Africa. Okay, that's, that's, that's Brazil. And they're well, located in Salvador de Bahia. I visited there for carnival. It's just absolutely amazing, this black city. Okay, um, very Afrocentric. And basically, they, 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 everything about them is African. They don't hide it. They want to be African, but they speak Portuguese. Okay. Um, so therefore, they've always resisted the for the most part, the whitewashing. Okay. It was so and, African. And are you aware that on the continent of Africa, the average age of a person is 20 years old? Very young. Yeah. So they, the old are dying. And um, yeah. The youngest on the planet. Exactly. Exactly. In, you know that in, in, Africa is currently going through a baby boom. They're going through a baby boom. Exactly. Which is amazing. Right. So what that means is 
that if every black person got with a white tea per person, there'd be no more white tea people. That's what they're afraid of. I don't think we have to be afraid of them trying to do that to black people globally because that's what they're afraid of. And if you know about Dr. Francis Cress Wilson's work, then you understand that uh, white supremacy is not a matter of hatred. It's a matter of self-preservation of a phenotype. And that phenotype would no longer exist if they were really going to try to enact that plan it would defeat the purpose of white supremacy. But big up to Sister Black is Beautiful. Thank you for the panther pause. We're gonna to go to the next guest. O I Z. Uh, give us your age, race, and pronouns, please. Um. Hi. I'm 18, and I I'm a she/her. Your race. And I'm black. All right. Talk to us. All right. Well, he just said about like black people going extinct. That's not true. Ashley, we're we're literally most like most of the race like we're us and hispanic people like those people are literally the um are most of the race you know uh you saying most of the race you mean most of humanity the population yeah the most of the like human population i don't know about hispanic people hispanic is a spanish-speaking person or a person from a spanish-speaking country so do you mean indigenous South Americans, indigenous, like to Latin America? No. Okay. I don't know what you mean then. Are you I saying mean, like uh, global people of color in general are like yeah, actually the majority of our population? Yes, I understand what you're saying. We're only the minority mm -hmm. in the West. We're only a minority here. But everywhere else, there's a majority of black people or people of color. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. But, okay. And what he just said about the agenda, like with the black people and white people getting together. Well, there is an agenda for like, for them to get together, actually. Like, a scientist said that the the um the sun is getting hotter and in a couple of years white people aren't going to be able to like be in the sun that much mm. why they getting bunkers so, they make they getting uh, upscale caves to go back into yeah huh? so 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 they're getting with um they want their children to be alive so they're getting with black people because black people have melanin and we have we're we're supposed to, supposed to be in a sun so that's one reason why they're getting together again this 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 idea i hear you and it is it speaks to those white tea folks that fetishize us uh, for our physical features, um, and 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 those people do exist, uh, but the the goal of white supremacy is not to make more uh, black biracial people because they still see biracial people as black. Um, you know, they black they might get certain privileges and phenotype, but uh, for the most part, whenever. Uh, a biracial person is in the room with a bunch of white people. They're the black person in the room. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I, I think a lot of us need to understand where racism, white supremacy comes from in the uh, psycho analysis like uh, of racism. Uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, I think, is a good place to start. Um, I think if more of us knew about it, then we wouldn't have to take this conversation to genetics. We can keep it in the social. We can keep it in the social political sphere. You know, we don't have to go to genetics because to say that just because they do, they do, they fetishize us, but uh, they also know that if we were to start getting it on with them at a mass rate, mm -hmm. um, they would no longer exist. And that's they, what they're scared of. That's it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's literally gonna happen one day. 
Just saying, it's gonna have to happen. Well, I mean, not if people of African ancestry actually wise up and understand that intermixing with the oppressors is not going to save us. It's going to only yeah, endure gonna, further. That it's gonna happen, know, though. Just not, saying, not it's not. It's not like not if like we actually that. wise up and if we not actually not so prioritize, fast. Well, if we wise up and prioritize each other as black yeah. people, yeah. then yeah. very much so and, that and we have every say. hold on, hold on, sister. We have every bit of control over whether or not that will actually happen. Mm -hmm. Now having these conversations and, and making our people, well, hold on, make, having these conversations and making our people aware of the dangers that are very much so are absolutely involved in intermixing in that way um, will very much so lead to more of that educated stance of, of our people being able to approach the situation more from a perspective that's actually not a colonized mentality, more so of a perspective that's, oh, okay, Here's the facts. I can make my decision now, uh, but yeah, like that's. I don't. I don't think it's going to be like a. I think what's more so going to happen is that their numbers are going to dwindle down so much so to the point that they're going to be the cause of their own self destruction. So, uh, but you know, I mean, that's based off of the reports, the data that we can see. You know, I think um, by the year two thousand one hundred, this is expected to be an additional well one hundred and fourteen. I think I rechecked it, so it's. 14 million less people of European ancestry in uh, Europe, whereas on Africa, um, in Africa, there's going to be an additional 2 billion. So, you know, they're trying to intermix. They're trying very, very hard. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, in the vast majority of instances, we choose each other. We don't choose them. Mm -hmm. And um, if we all actually get together, like, that's another thing that they're scared of is like us getting together, like all the black people actually coming together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we know. That's, that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Well, thanks for coming up. Yeah, I just want, wait. Am I good to talk? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Tristan. Um, I just wanted to add to what you had said earlier. Very much like how in the shows and the movies that are up listed, it's like pushing a narrative of like a um interracial relationship or like a black woman looking for like the white savior because we don't really look and think that we can solve our problems and we can look for our love and you know, build our community in our own people. And I'll admit <laughs> when I was in, like I said, I went to school with a lot of white people. So when I was younger, I, I was too one of those people who thought that it didn't matter if I dated a white man, it didn't matter if, you know, I just thought love was love, but I very soon found out, <laughs> I very soon effed around and found out that there are just some things that cannot be salvage like there are just some things that can't be explained there are some things that a white man would never understand and it's not that i there are no white people who understand my struggle it's not that there are none who are you know mm -hmm. good people it's not that at all but it's just something that they personally would never understand and for my own personal reasons i didn't feel like i could be protected by those white men i didn't i didn't feel like i was comfortable to be me and I always felt like I was trying to compete with a standard of beauty that wasn't even my own. Like I was mm. not even loving myself. So mm. moving forward after I got out of that and I actually started to pursue black love, I really started to mm. understand just the spirituality attached to that and how we're so much stronger together. Like mm -hmm. I would never I think to marry a white man now. And it's no shade that. to white people. <laughs> Thank you. Brothers, no get you one of these. People. Get you one of these. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the brother that got the brothers that got one of these, man. Yes. Get you a sister. Build your family strong uh, with knowledge of self. Build your children to love themselves. And guess where it starts? With you. Loving yes. yourself. Then you mm -hmm. can love a black man. Then you can love a black woman. Absolutely. And you dive deeper into who you are also. Because then Absolutely. it becomes like that curiosity of where you come from, what your roots are, like who you are as an individual and what you want to practice with your black love and what you want to teach your black children. 
that's why I really like the question, like, is marriage or interracial marriage ethical? And is mm -hmm. it pro-black? Because it's not. Right. Pro-blackness, y'all, for those of y'all that don't know, let's talk about pro-blackness real quick. Black consciousness. It all starts there. Consciousness. Black consciousness defined by Steve Biko of South Africa. Uh, black consciousness is the retention of your African identity and the rejection, the total rejection of white supremacy. You cannot reject white supremacy and have a white tea person in your bed. Uh, then we talk about pro-blackness. Pro-blackness as defined by the scholars, Dr. Amos Wilson, Om Omowale, Malcolm X, El, El Haj Malik El Shabazz, and uh, John Henry Clark, his teacher, is prioritizing one's actions and values with what's in the best interest of building within the black community. That means that your priority is to build with your community above the best interest of self, because we believe in Ubuntu. I am who I am because of who we all are. We don't believe in individual love. We believe in communal love. We believe you, you don't love yourself if you don't love where you come from. And then also there's uh, not only uh, prioritizing uh, you know, coming up and talking, but actually taking action. That's what pro-blackness is. You cannot say that you prioritize liberating and being constructive and building with your community if you are building uh, with a, a snowman or, or a pile of snow. Can't build a brick house with snow. That's an igloo. All right, we're going to go to the next guest. Rashad, what's going on, brother? Ain't nothing much. Uh... Just keying in, the sister definitely gave us a word. Um, Y'all got to be mindful of, as black people, like you said, it's very important that we love ourselves. And then once you love yourself, you will be able to choose the black person that's uh, for you, you know. A sister in the comments said that she was, comp she felt like she was still competing with a beauty standard with her black, with a black man. I'm like, well that, well, that brother must not have been educated because the black man only knows the beauty standard, quote unquote, of African people, right? We don't, we don't know anything else, right? America and the, the place that we live kind of project another type of, you know, outlook on beauty onto us and especially our women, right? So stand on if you standing in your blackness you will attract the right the right black person for you and i, I really do feel that that's true um but our interracial marriages between black and white people are ethical no they're not because for hundreds of years uh white people have have had free access to our bodies to our spirits and now that we are pressing back and not fighting per se because we ain't got there yet but now that we're pressing back and ask the questions now white people want to come out of the woodwork and uh challenge us on why it's ethical meanwhile upholding the very same oppression that brought the the question to the forefront right they want access is they want access to your bodies without doing any of the work right when mm -hmm. people get into relationships the goal is to, you know what I'm saying, develop the connection, do the work. So once you once you can get to that level, you can get to that level. But white people as a whole have completely more than more than neglected us, you know what I'm saying, negatively affected our lives for so long. Now they want to have the same type of access to our bodies, but without the shackles. And it's just, it, it, it's very uh, weird to see people come up here and just try to make excuse after excuse, right? People in the comments saying we racist and everything. Insane. Mm -hmm. Can you black and marry non-black people? No, you cannot. Um, there, is, there is nothing that even a person of color could do for you in any type of spiritual or soulful sense um yes your flesh will be satisfied but where does that leave you after that um black people have such a have such a huge shared experience and especially in america 
the, the, the tightness and closeness of our community is something that we should always gatekeep and hold to a high degree. Um, so I mean, you can't build anything past a family with a non-black person, right? And you really can't build that like you can, like you should be able to because of, you know, the power dynamic. So, you know, Mary, y'all choose one. We don't have to get up here and tell people who to choose. Once you love yourself, you will choose that which edifies you the most. And that is a, and, and in Earth One, I don't know how many Earths there are in the multiverse, but in Earth One, that is a black person. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, yo, I got a meeting to go to. You know, my pro black self has a nonprofit link in the bio. We're building things for black people. Uh, we're creating Sankofopedia, an Afrocentric online resource so that our children, our brothers and our sisters can learn more about their history through the eyes of their people. World history, not just black history, but world history from the African lens. And uh, that's going to be a site that's a free, comprehensive online encyclopedia like Wikipedia uh, with, however, graphs and charts to show you connections to how people come together. I have a meeting because we have a developers meeting, but I appreciate everybody coming up on the live. Big up to all the brothers and sisters and love. You know what I'm saying? We're going to come back. I'll be back up uh, tomorrow. Free the land. Free Africa. Free Congo, free Haiti, free Sudan, free brothers and sisters in South Africa, free brothers and sisters in Kenya. Kenya, we watching what's going on out there. I hope brothers and sisters in America is watching what's going on in Kenya. We seeing what's going to go down in, in Nigeria. Get Tanubu out of office. We don't need these African puppets. Peace to the Sahel region, the AES, brothers and sisters in Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso. We watching what's going on in Chad. Uh, big up to all my Brazilian, Afro-Brazilian, Afro-Cubans, brothers and sisters in America. We got nothing but love for y'all. I'm out. My name is Brother Legend. I'm here to raise your consciousness. Black power, y'all. Talk to you tomorrow.